Um, so I'm Neil Costigan. I'm the CEO at BehaviSec. We're a Swedish uh, IT and mobile security company. And the fundamental, I think, of what we are out to do is we believe the old ways of internet and, and, and authentication and verification, things like dongles and smart cards and, and, and funny passwords and out-of-band SMSs, are just not appropriate. They're not pragmatic in a kind of new mobile connected world. There, there shouldn't be 59 seconds of a one minute uh, buying a coffee in a shop for $5 needing to do security. If possible, the good guys shouldn't see any security at all. So our mission is to go out and, 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 and take it out of the picture. And so the whole game, you know, the security, there's a friction part too, is like, who are you, you know, what, what's that password, what's your, your mother's maiden name, do you have the dongle, is your battery still in it, did you have the smart card, do you know the pin, what's your password, forget, all that kind of stuff, and it's just a game. Uh, and the idea that we're putting out is that if we can take out this, this user experience friction um, and yet uh, minimize the risk to the banks. I mean, an example here today, we, we all got our... Um, um, Wi-Fi password. Did anybody put that in? I mean, why did we need to have this stupid long letters, passwords, words? There, there was really no need. We were just giving it anyway. And so one should look at the context about what we're doing and, and see, you know, what's appropriate. Do you need technologies that's, that's applicable to, to protecting nuclear secrets for buying that coffee in Starbucks? It, it, it's not there. So it's an adaptive risk-based approach to security. And we do this, and this is where it's a bit buzzword bingo, but the enabler, the reason this technology of behavioral biometrics has become really big recently is, is from innovations by people like ourselves and some of our peers that took big data, buzz, and um, uh, machine learning and kind of took this intriguing technology that was fun in a lab into mainstream use because we, we brought the quality up. We moved it from the 80% chance to 99 by using these technologies. So it's about what the person is. Using these technologies, we get security. Uh, and there's a number of ways of looking at behavior, and, and what we do, we define it by how the person interacts with their device or the, um, uh, the, the browser or whatever. It's, it's the keystroke rhythm in, as a fundamental. It's how you move across the keys. And not what you're typing. It's not that you're typing password, but it's how you move from the P to the A to the SSS or whatever. You, it's it's, it's the, the rhythm of typing. Uh, and also how you move your mouse, how you go across the screen, how you hover on a button, would you sweep that way, would you sweep this way, that kind of thing. And we analyze that. And even better in a, in a mobile world, uh, the amount of sensors and information available to us in a, a touchscreen device is incredible. So we're looking at the swipe, the acceleration, how much pressure you put on the keys, how much area under your skin on it. Uh, so all these little things, the gyroscope, the angle, are all merged into the algorithm. So we do... You know, here would be an example. Everybody's trying, it doesn't come out very well, unfortunately, on the screen, but uh, everyone is trying to do the, the S pattern on the screen to, to open it up, and we've three individuals here, and if we, if we underneath the hood watch how they did it, you can see, and I think the video should work here. No, no, it's not going to go. Well, basically, you've got the, uh, the pattern. Is, is the person move out. Some people kind of, at the beginning, are light touch and then finish to the end. Another person is very consistent in it, and this person rarely touches the screen. So the same pattern has lots of other properties that we do for the security. So we can take something simple like a PIN number or a password, and instead of like one in 10,000 for a PIN number, we can make it one in a million with this hidden underneath uh, information of biometrics. So we, we collect very, very light collection, as little as possible on the device or in the browser. Uh, and in real time, we're analyzing. So we're providing a score about how likely the person is who they say they are in real time. It's not just when you log in. So it's not just this gatekeeper old concept, like get in, and then you open up, and you can do whatever you want. So we're doing it every screen of the way. You log in, you transfer money, you, you tab an amount, your accounts overview. All the time, we're getting it. So you can think about the amount of rich data that we're pulling in uh, all through the session of a transaction, a payment, or an internet bank session. So it's completely transparent. The end user rarely sees it. From the 15 odd million people we know using, and I'd say there's a handful know that the technology's there. Not by design. It's by design they don't see it, but we're not trying to be malicious or big brother. It's just there, and only if your behavior's not right would you be challenged. So the idea is, is completely transparent uh, and user friendly. So, as a Swedish company, university spin out, been around forever and a day. We, we call ourselves the oldest overnight success. And really year zero for us as a company was kind of when we got our seed funding from Connor Ventures from Finland back uh, 2011. Um, and when we got our first million user customer, and, and Danske Bank were great. Most, most banks and most uh, fintech 
don't really talk about the security. And so there's one lesson any of you take. If you could help the startups and the, the, the innovators publicize with references and case studies and that kind of things, it would be fabulous. So when Danska said that they're using our technology with over a million end users, that changed everything uh, for us. And really, the references counted so much. Uh, so we, uh, we had a lot of research funding from the US Defense, from DARPA, who like to fund new crazy ideas like ours. Uh, and we pretty much got a number of the banks in the Nordic. So we got up to about 3 million people in 2014. Uh, last year kind of got busy. Uh, we got every single internet mobile user in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, uh, or most of Denmark using the technology, and a number of projects uh, across Europe. So we, we hit about 15 million users. The technology is appropriate for fintech in that kind of light collection analysis in the background, but Moore's Law has been very kind to us. We've also been able to stick it inside the phone. So the work with DARPA and then the handset manufacturers who are looking for next generation kind of technologies, particularly consumer friendly, user friendly. Uh, so we've got great projects with some hidden customers that we hope to see in the handsets in the, in the next few years. And then this year, already crazy, we have projects in Rome, Madrid, Zurich, Geneva, Paris, Berlin, Munich, London, Dublin, all of Scandinavia, and right here in Amsterdam, of course, as well. Um, and so, you know, the same pattern, this, this technology, which is kind of adopted in the Nordics, uh, we've seen it spreading all over. And we estimate we'll do about a billion transactions. About half of these we operate ourselves in the cloud, and about half are given to customers who operate it on premise. So there's a mixture in that. And about half is mobile as well, so a bit of change in trend there. Uh, and why do they buy it? Well, they're reducing fraud. They're taking out this uh, cumbersome security barrier uh, from the customers. So, I mean, we believe the end user shouldn't really need to be there. The fraud officers and security people are the ones who need to know. Um, and so while we, if anybody follows the classic crossing the chasm, growth, innovation, curve, or whatever, we believe we've, we've formed the beachhead over the chasm and have been directly selling to the banks and been relatively successful at it. But we're changing that a little bit now. We're getting a lot of interest of people who are supplying identities on the net. So people like Swisscom and Luxtrust and Bank ID in the Nordics for, for social welfare payments, other things. There we go. There we go. Thank you very much and uh, congratulations with the growth. Thank you. It's uh, yeah, been, a, been an interesting year. Good. Um, some questions from the, the panel? Yes, please. Uh, um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, just a quick question. How is it installed um, at the customer? Uh, if I take a mobile um, environment, uh, we provide a small SDK to the app developers. So think of your internet bank's app. It, it, it kind of gets compiled in there, just, just the collection part. And all we're doing there is just cat catching events. Um, it's then the, 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 the intelligence of the smarts are in the back end. So either on premise in the customer's data center, and a lot of the banks want to do that for data protection reasons and just operation efficiency and stuff, or in the cloud, uh, we offer services there. So that the kind of brain is web services sitting in the background over massive database. So. You don't have to connect to the core, core system. No. Um, the integration would be a decision point. We, we wouldn't tell the bank to what to do with the fact that it's not a customer. We're just providing the information. Generally, the banks are either using it as part of the overall picture of what's going on. Uh, they're doing other things like transaction amounts, time of day, using technologies like NetGuardians to look at, at other activities. And we'd be a source of information in their overall dashboard. But mainly, the integration would be, if the behavior is not right, to challenge the user for legacy security stuff like a smart card or a token. And so the integration point and the decision point is that, what to do with the information. So that, that's, the, that's the kind of overhead when we work with a customer, is, is figuring out what they want to do with it. Thank you. How uh, sort of proprietary or defensible is your is your technology, given that your your space of role biometrics seems to be a, a pretty busy and competitive um, space? Yeah, um, we we'd see ourselves as being a kind of different layer than most biometrics. In fact, you can enhance traditional biometrics with our technology and increase the accuracy and encrypt the score. So, with some work and some IP around the idea of merging the biometrics together and getting kind of one and one as five. Um, with our own, and we're a venture backed company, University Spin Out, we've done a lot of work with, say, the US Defense. We have a, a strong bank of IP. Now, no, no customers coming to us asking, I want to buy that patent or license it, but it's just what you know, companies, technology companies do. So we're continually innovating and continually protecting that IP. 
um, we force move advantage. It's it, the big job with big data and, and AI is, is to get the data to see it. And with our you know billions of transactions and the millions and millions of users, we, we've got a great source of, of technology to bank on. So so I think the quality of our stuff compared to some of the Me Too's are coming along and saying, hey, we will do this. We're kind of we've been doing it for eight years. We've got a lot of knowledge in there. So. Which other industries can it be used in? Well, I, I was going to get into that. I mean, they, we got to fintech because traditionally in security, the, you're the early adopters, and particularly some of the you know technology where the European banks were very much IT companies who do banking see this technology, and that's a great market to go after first. But it's not obviously a fintech thing. We're not you know we really don't care actually what's going on in the transaction. Uh, things like distance education, uh, sharing environments of desktops in, in large environments like this. All those are ripe for adopting this technology. Software licensing is another one. You know, we can tell when people are sharing access to paywalls and that kind of stuff. But they're just not the people with the money. I would hate to go around looking for money from universities to, to spend in security technology. That's a hard sell. It'll come later. And also with credibility, um, enterprise and that, I think our partners, we'll get to something like enterprise and, and government and that through partners who already sell existing security solutions. I don't think we have the credibility or the market reach or the, the size to be credible talking to some of them. So I think direct selling to the banks is what we've been doing to date. We're kind of moving into a, a partner kind of arrangement, working with the likes of Monetize and Temenos with banking platforms, working with security vendors, and they'll tackle other markets for us. Uh, we'd kind of see ourselves as a technology company, engineering company, making the technology and not necessarily the ones who will end deliver to the customers long term. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.